Hey, Peace Family, during this time of uncertainty and crisis, let me give you some free game. Tap in to all the lessons from our Corner Class Tour for you and your family right now. St. Louis, what's going on? That's it? What's going on, family? I thought it was supposed to rain till tomorrow. What happened? Who brought this weather here? St. Louis brought <laughs> I'll take the heat. All day. Not the humidity, though. So y'all get humid. I can't have it both ways? It's not Burger King? Okay, my bad. That is true. That is true. All right, family. So appreciate y'all coming out to the 2019 Corner Class. First, give yourselves a round of applause for coming out on a Friday evening, 6 p.m., in the sprinkles, whatever it's trying to do today. Uh, for those who do not know me, my name is Will Roundtree, uh, credit mastery instructor here at the Jay Morrison Academy, president, co-founder of Easy Funding with my brother King Jay, president, owner of We Management Services, author of the book Credit is King, which we have a couple copies out. But uh, more importantly, you know, a few years back, I started exactly where most of you guys were at. You know, I w wanted to learn more about, you know, real estate, creating wealth, or just, I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Was anybody, is anybody in that point right now? Is any, is nobody not going to raise their hands? All right, there we go. I need some participation. Can I get that? Yeah. All right, we're going to start doing some jumping jacks or push-ups or something out here. All right, I need some, I need some participation. We need some energy, family. All right, so, so uh, a couple years back, you know, I can remember being at work on my on my job and searching the internet wasn't even supposed to be on the internet uh and i came across and stumbled king jay's uh, breakfast club interview anybody see that interview before and so he was on the interview talking about real estate being a celebrity realtor all these things and those things did not capture my attention what caught my attention was his vision and his vision was to come out into the communities and repair our, us as black people and for those who don't know how many people know this is the 400th anniversary of uh, 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 this year for the first slaves coming to the United States. We need to be excited about things and be excited about us as people, as a people, as a community. Because guess what, family? It, it, we've been, we, we've had psychological warfare against us as a community. How many people would agree? Yeah. From the information to the food to the poisoning of our water in different uh, states and all of that if, and all of that and so one of the things we can control is our minds but we got to be willing to go out there and get the information and so one of the things that I'm always talking about is that when you're th when you change your thinking that's when you'll become successful see a lot of times people haven't acquired or found any success because they have the same mindset you know I'm always saying that information changes every 18 months we'll go out and upgrade our iPhone but we won't change the way we think and so we gotta we got we gotta get better with that. And so and that's one of the reasons we're on this 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 national city tour, coming to the corners for free. Do I need to say that again? We come into the corners for free, flying our entire team out because we want to come out and come back to the communities and repair our repair our people. We love our people. You know what I'm saying? Can we speak candidly today? We all family, right? All right, perfect. And so we want to come back into the community and give this information because I'm telling you, it's not a lot of people that look like us that's out here preaching financial gospel. Would you guys agree with that? And the ones that do look like us, they're hoarding the information. But one of the things I learned a long time ago, it doesn't take any fire away from my flame to light your torch because now we have that much brighter of a flame. So we need to come together as a community, as a family, and go out here and let them know we are beacon in this in this world in this community you know we should be up in arms that people are coming from other countries buying back our blocks seriously but what are we going to do about it complain no I always say it don't make sense to complain because nobody's going to listen anyway so we're coming back giving you guys a solution but with that solution being said you all have to be willing to do the work all of us collectively we have to be willing to put in the work because unfortunately sometimes as my grandfather used to say if it's dressed in overalls and look like work we don't want to do it but again it all starts with changing our mindset so going back to that breakfast club interview 
Again, the thing that caught my attention with King J was the fact that he had a vision of wanting to repair our communities. And I didn't see nobody at that time that looked like us that had a little bit of swag. Because, you know, sometimes you see a couple people speaking that language and you're like, I can't identify with that. And so he caught my attention. So what I did was I was very intentional. I wanted to align myself with somebody that I can have an alike vision with. And so I would reach out to him. And so for two years, I reached out to King J. How many people are willing to invest two years of their time to get their vision out? And be honest. And so with that being said, I reached out to him and he said, King, you know what? If you're serious about working and partnering with me, I need you to invest in yourself. So I joined the academy, joined the academy, got the knowledge, because how can I go out here and repair our people when I lack the information myself? Because a lot of times we want to be in position to, to go out here and do things, but we don't have the proper information or a solution to be able to provide. And so joined the academy, and back then it was one course, one course in the academy. Now we have a, a complete, full, robust, robust course, everything from credit mastery, uh, residential real estate, commercial real estate, self-development, stocks and finance, and then, of course, uh, what's the last one? And um, uh, business management. And now, of course, we have our RBCs, which stands for real estate, business, and credit. Anybody signed up for our new RBCs course? Three people? All right. I want to see more hands after today, okay? Because you guys going to invest in yourselves, right? Because if we don't invest in ourselves, who will? Or if you don't invest in yourself, why would I want to invest in you? Right? And so we got to start thinking like that. And one of the things that I've learned, too, sometimes, yeah, it could be a financial situation. But one of the things that I tell people, if it's something that's a necessity, you will find a way to make it happen. Want me to prove it to y'all? If, if I came out here and said, you know what, I have a Mercedes Benz for sale for the price of a, a, a Kia, how many people will find the money to finance that Mercedes Benz? So it's never the money. Let me have some Jordans, a box full of Jordans for sale for $300. How many people will find that 300 bucks? I know y'all lying. How many people are not gonna raise their hand no matter what the hell I say? How many people took a shower today? Now, now y'all wanna raise y'all hands, okay, okay. We gonna get some participation some kind of way. And so, so understanding that um, with our RBCs course, the reason we put this curriculum together because who out here can agree with us and, and, and understand that our school systems have failed us yes. Yes. drastically, yeah. intentionally. intentionally. They're dumbing us down. I read an article about 10, 15 years ago that said that Walmart is a pilot for our communities. Walmart is a pilot for our community. So what did they do? They came in, dumped the, sc dumped the school system down, so now you have no choice but to go and work in these low-end jobs. They made it to where we can't compete in the marketplace. And so one of the things that I'm always constantly tell people is, and I want you guys to write this down or type it in your phone or at least put it in your subconscious. I never let schooling get in the way of my education. Famous Mark Twain quote, I never let schooling get in the way of my education. And essentially what that means, I dropped out of college. But I never stopped learning. I just went and learned the things that's going to, that was going to put me on a path of success. Because I don't know about you guys, family, I've yet to have to use the, the, what I've learned about dissecting a frog in the real world. You guys agree with me on that? Absolutely. And so our RBC's course was put in place to give you guys an opportunity to go out there and learn about something that's going to help you become the CEO of your last name, as King Jay would say. And RBCs, if you don't know, stands for real estate, business, and credit. Real estate, business, and credit. The reason we need to know those three fundamental courses, one, real estate. He who owns the most land, what? Wins. Repeat after me. He who owns the most land, wins. We have to own real estate. Who in here is familiar with the whole water crisis that happened in Flint, Michigan? Do you guys know Flint is, 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 is surrounded by water, right? They had a $36 billion infusion into that city. Y'all want to know why? They're about to create waterfront properties out there. 
Do you think it was a coincidence that the po that they poisoned the water? Pushed us out. But if we owned the real estate instead of just renting, could they just push us out? No. We have to own real estate family. Business. How are most jobs created? By more what? So instead of us going out there asking people for a job, begging us for a job, begging them for a job, we create our own. But if we don't know the fundamental principles of business, we can't start businesses that are going to thrive. You know, it's interesting because I speak with a lot of people across the country, and one of the things that I've learned is that anybody can open a business and start an LLC. How many people agree? Yeah. My nine-year-old son has an LLC. He ain't made no money, but he has an LLC. What we've lacked are the strategies to go out there and actually execute to be able to have profitable businesses so now we can come back and employ our families or our loved ones or our friends or the community. You know, I, I have a good friend who's, his family's from another country. And at one point, I used to think that people from other countries come over to the U.S. and they get special privileges and grants and loans. Anybody ever thought that before? But one of the things he told me, he said, Will, we don't get special privileges. We've learned how to master the game of credit. We've learned how to master the game of credit. And then we have the proper strategies in business. But then we go and we own real estate together. Y'all hear that word, right? Together. So they'll live 10 families in one home, save their money, pull the money together and resources, and they'll go open up that laundry mat. And then guess what they'll do? They'll have their family and relatives work for them at a lower wage, get that family in position, and then guess what they do? They go back and put the next family in position. But meanwhile, we don't want to live with our brother for six months. We don't want to live with our aunt. So again... A lot of this is the psychological warfare that's been done to us. Anybody ever read the Willie Lynch letters? Yeah. Now raise your hands. Deep. I recommend everybody read the book, the letters. They have it on audio. It's about 30 minutes long. And they talked about in a Willie Lynch how they would do things to psychologically paralyze us to let us know that if we decided to buck up on those slave masters, you would think twice. They would do things like tie the black males to the horses and pull his body parts apart and make sure that the mother was watching so the next time the mother see the son getting out of place, she would be like, you know what, baby, I don't think you want to go out and buck on a master like that. But that was done because then what it did was it softened us and demasculated us as men. And so understanding that we have over 400 plus years of reconditioning that we have to do. This is why we come to the corners and give the same message. You know, just like people who, when you go to church, you hear the same message every Sunday, right? Right? We need to hear the same financial message every Sunday. We need to hear the same uh, inspirational message. Come back to the corners and, and spewing hope to our people. Because a lot of times that's what we're lacking is the hope. How many people have, have had devastating things happen in their lives? It's hard to rebound from that sometimes, mentally, right? But how many people would agree that as a culture, as a race, we're some of the strongest, most resilient individuals on the planet Earth? How many people would agree with me on that? Let's show some love for that, y'all. As a people, as a community, we're extremely resilient. But when it comes to business and credit and finances, why do we... Why do we take it on the chin? Why do we just give up in life? Why do we have a lack of confidence? We'll go out there and, and my kings, we'll go out and try to talk to a queen who shot us down a million times. But, and keep trying. But get a rejection on a business loan application, oh, that stuff don't work. Oh, that real estate stuff, that's a scam. Why do, we, why do we go out there and put effort in things that have zero return on investment in our lives? We do it all the time. And the last component, credit, of the RBCs. I want people to write this down or type this in your phone. <clears throat> credit equals wealth. Credit equals wealth. I want to tell you guys a story about credit. You guys still with me? You guys still with me? Yes. So my brother of over 20 plus years had did about 16 years in the university. 
You guys familiar with the university is, right? Yeah. All right. Some of y'all will catch that on the way back home. So two years prior to his release date, I started mentoring him on business, real estate, and credit. Two years prior to his release date. Six months, into, six months prior to him getting out, six to nine months, we started working on his credit. I'm going to tell y'all, this is how dope and powerful credit is, y'all. When he gets out from the university, for those who don't know, he was incarcerated. Not only did he have a 700 plus credit score, 755 to be exact, but he had a business set up. He's been out eight weeks and he's outperforming and outrunning people who's never ever been incarcerated. So what's different about him than the people who are around him who are stuck in the same position they were stuck in when he got locked up 16 years ago? Again, but it was a mindset. He got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And sometimes we do have to hit rock bottom before we decide to make that change because we can speak candidly, right? Yeah. We can speak candidly, right? Yeah. Some of us too damn comfortable. Yeah. We're comfortable being okay. Right. You know what? I got a house. I got a car. Got a flat screen TV. I'm good. I'm going to keep going. I think it was a shot of Patron. <laughs> Don't judge me, Queen. <laughs> we get comfortable in life. You know what? I got a degree. Yeah, but you $90,000 in student loan debt. Oh, that can be a whole nother corner class. The hustle of student loan debt. Y'all want to know a story? Y'all want to know why I dropped out of college? Y'all want one person? All right, come on. I'll tell you, King. All right. So I can remember being in my economics class and my uh, economics teacher was talking about all the things he was attempting to do. And none of them talked about creating wealth and becoming wealthy. So, and for those who don't know me, outside of business, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty introverted person. But when it comes to business, I just get passionate. And so I rarely spoke or talked in class. I raised my hand, I said, Mr. Whatever, you mean to tell me you can't teach me to be wealthy? He said, no, I dropped out. If you can't teach me to create wealth, I don't want to be in this institution. Because one thing I've learned is that, and I'm no, math, I'm no mathematician, but if I go to school for $100,000 a year, uh, for the four years and come out making 30000 those numbers don't make sense. Numbers don't lie. And then they say information changes every 18 months. So by the time I graduate, the information is what? It's outdated. So now I got to do what? Go back to school, spend another eighty, ninety thousand, and get a five thousand dollar bump in increase in pay. But then, guess what? I don't like the, the field I'm working in. So what do I do? Go right back to school, get another fifty thousand dollars in student loan debt. Now I come out, I'm making about sixty thousand, but I owe about three hundred thousand in, in student loans. Y'all see the hustle? So I'm not. It's no knock against college, but. I tell people, look at college as a business decision. Y'all want me to say that again? Yeah. Look at college as a business decision. If you're going to college and you're getting a degree in underwater basket weaving, you may have picked the wrong course. <laughs> Unless you're passionate about I'll watch some YouTube videos then. But if you're going because you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, like an actual professional career, then that's a different situation. But like one of the hottest industries right now, the coding industry, I would rather go and take a nine month course because when you go to school for four years, now you're competing with people who are already three and a half years into the workforce. And so again, we got to start looking at things differently and stop looking at how they're peddling college on our communities as, as, as the end all be all. You guys want me to say that again? They're peddling on us as an end all be all. And so by understanding credit equaling wealth, and going back to my partner, who I was telling y'all about, who's actually here with me. He drove up from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This how hungry this king is. Y'all give it up for him. He's hungry. Came out, started a business, got credit, about to purchase his first investment property. Been locked up 16 years. Didn't even know how to send an email when he first got out. 
And so understand, what, what excuses do we have? None. We have to eliminate excuses. Write this down or type this in your phone. We can make excuses or money, but we can't do both, family. You know, back in the day when I used to go and, uh, and, and, and sit with my mentor, <clears throat> and he'll be like, hey, Will, did you do this? And I'll be like, no, I didn't get to complete that. He was like, you know what, come back to me when you're ready. Now I go back to him, he's like, Will, did you do that? I'm like, no. He was like, you know what, next time you got an excuse, just say you ran out of peanut butter. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean by that? He was like, because any excuse you say, is, it, it doesn't matter. So instead of giving me some BS excuse, just say I ran out of peanut butter. So he said, Will, did you do that? No, nah, I ran out of peanut butter. He was like, okay. Now you're being honest at least. <laughs> so a lot of us are lying to ourselves. See, we confuse grinding with productivity. Y'all need to hear that again? We confuse grinding with productivity. See, you can be grinding and do a bunch of things but not getting anywhere. A lot of us are running in a, on a treadmill, that hamster on the wheel. And so once, we, uh, once I understand... Okay. Once I understood the power of credit and how credit equals wealth, because I want you guys to write this down. As long as you have great credit, you will always be able to get money. You will always be able to create opportunities. Always. Think about it like this. So, any real estate investors in here? Yep. All right. Give it up for yourselves. We, that's something we got to celebrate. As I, first of all, uh, any entrepreneurs in the house? Give it up for yourselves. We got to get excited about our dreams. Hold on, hold on. That, that was weak. Let your favorite rapper come out here. I hear everybody. Exactly. So give it up. If you are an entrepreneur, you sh No, I wanted you to clap. I was looking at the rest of them. Not. If you're an entrepreneur striving for your goals and you know you're going to do whatever the hell you got to do to hit your goals, give it up for yourself. That's how excited we got to be about our, our dreams. Because if we don't, who will? Right. You know, they say in a book, Think and Grow Rich. How many people read that book before? They said the number one, one of the top reasons, I say is probably number one, reasons that most people fail in business is worrying about what their friends, family, and relatives think about them. And I tell people, first of all, they will never spend money with you. They trying to see how they can get a hookup. But then to go to the Louis store and, and spend three times so they can post it online to people who don't even like them anyway. But then want a discount from me. No, I'm going to charge you double just because. And so we worried about our friends, family, and relatives. We can just get over that part of going in business. You're that much closer to success. I promise you. And so the reason I, I want people to get excited as entrepreneurs, some of us are scared to talk about what we do. I'm like, King, what you do? Oh, I do. Uh, like trying to whisper it to me. Like, nah. Tell the world what you do. You should be your biggest advertisement. You should be your biggest marketing agent. You should be a walking billboard for whatever it is you want to do. Because if you don't tell nobody, how they going to know what you do? Like, I used to be scared to tell people I own my own business. Why? I don't know. I don't know. But then after a while, I was like, no, I should be excited. I'm helping to create jobs in my community. Why wouldn't I want to be excited about that? So that's why I want people to get excited about entrepreneurship and what you're doing as entrepreneurs. So understanding, for my real estate investors, I talk to so many investors who say, you know what, only use cash, King. And I'm like, that's cool and that's cute. But how many people know you will eventually run out of cash real quick, fast? Wish I had an acronym for fast because I would make something up. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Real quick. But when you understand the power of credit, you will never run out of capital. Y'all want to know why? Just a baby? Okay, come on up here. Y'all want to know why? Yes. So, y'all ready for this? I'm about to give y'all some game, boy, I'm telling you. Drop something? All right, let me get this collection plate ready first, all right? I got to make it back home. All right, so when you understand the power of credit, of course, you can always leverage your credit with your business and be able to get access to unsecured, 
uncollateralized and non-discretionary capital from the banks. Who knows what unsecured means? Anybody, shout it out. No collateral. That is very important when it, when it comes to understand the power of getting the bank's money utilizing credit. In our one-on-one -on -one coaching, we show people how to purchase real estate investment properties using credit cards. When you buy a property using credit, money off of credit cards, guess what? The, the, the property is not collateralized. So worst case scenario, if your credit takes a bump or a bruise, but you can always repair your credit, guess what? You still own the what? You still own the what? You still own the what? So you can never go without because you still own the asset. And when you own the asset, you can still sell it. You can fix your credit and re refinance it. If you're renting it out, you're still getting residual income. How many people know you get rich by building residual income? I call that on a beach sipping out a coconut, getting money while you're not doing nothing. That's how you get wealthy. It's not by having a savings account with $7,000 in there. That's not how we get wealthy, people. We build residual income. And so by leveraging our credit with the business, I can go out and create an LLC, leverage my 750 plus credit score with my business partner, Armand, and we can go out there and get up to $250,000 of the bank's money unsecured. Now, because the money is going to be in the form of revolving credit cards and re, uh, business lines of credit, guess what else? I don't have to show proof of income. Remember, he just came out from being incarcerated for 16 years. Did he have proof of income? Well, he wasn't supposed to. But we helped him get over $50,000 of capital Three weeks of him being out. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. So it's no excuse for any of us not to be able to get access to this capital. But then guess what? We can go out and set up another five LLCs and go and duplicate that and get $50,000 for every single LLC that he has. Come on, come on. That's how we create wealth. Because getting the money is the easiest part, family. It's the strategies, though. So that's what we lack. We lack the strategies. Because I'll be brutally honest, we've helped people get a hundred something plus thousand dollars and I go to their IG page and they got sparklers on every single story on Instagram. They went out and blew the money at the club. Wow. See, we want to look rich. Yeah. That's a, a lot of times that's our problem. Yep. We want to look rich. Wealth doesn't have a look, period. Some of my most wealthiest friends don't even own a television. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. But yeah, we got to have a big screen in every single house, the garage, the bathroom, in the tub, like crazy. We want to look wealthy. Wealth doesn't have a look. And so <clears throat> going back to Armand having these five LLCs, worse, let's say in the event he takes an L on a business. I'm about to put y'all up on some game. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Let's say he takes an L on one of his businesses. What wealthy people have learned how to do is shut the company down and file BK. Because bankruptcy is what's called asset protection. Write that down. Bankruptcy is asset protection. <clears throat> Has nothing to do with being poor or broke. I always tell people, poor is an acronym that stands for passing over opportunities repeatedly. So a lot of us are poor because of the poor mindset we have. It's not about the lack of economics that we have. And so in the event that that happens, but because Armand has been working on himself <clears throat> and he's made himself a certified expert based off of his actions, not just saying he's doing it, what a lot of us may have done in the past, going back to that, hey, I'm grinding, but are you productive? Big difference. He filed bankruptcy, which is asset protection, but guess what? The BK he filed is against the company, so they can't take his personal assets, like 45. Another person, you guys may have heard of this small-time rapper out of Queens, New York, Curtis Jackson. You guys familiar with him? 50 Cent, he filed bankruptcy. Not because he was broke, he was protecting his assets. But here's the cold play when it comes to business. So... <clears throat> Armand had to file bankruptcy because somebody slipped and fell in one of his properties. Guess what? He can create another LLC, 
He has a brother that's about 20, how old is AD now, 30? 30, 30 years old. We're going to create his brother's credit, get him to a 750. Armand has the LLC, which he's the owner of. He's going to add his brother to the LLC, create what's called an operating agreement, and now he can use his brother's credit with the LLC and go out and get some more money from the bank, and he doesn't have to stop what he's doing. But guess what? He set up another five LLCs. Guess what he can do? Guess what he can do? Do it again. He can recycle the money. Recycle the money. This is how we get wealthy. See, I'm telling y'all, this is what they didn't want us to know. This is what they did not want us to know. What if I told you the reason credit is so powerful? Because if we truly understand, understood the power of credit in our communities, we would not be dead last in real estate right now. Yeah. Yeah. Dead last, not just last, dead last. And who can tell me the top two ways that wealth is passed down from generation to generation? Real estate and what else? Life insurance. You've been following us for a while, King. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's another game they've been playing that they didn't teach us. Guess what place we're in in both of those categories? Dead last. Dead last. When you're in your 20s, you can get a half a million dollar life insurance policy for 30 bucks. Probably less than that. I know people who have cell phone bills 15 times that, but we don't want to get life insurance. Our cable bill packages are more than what life insurance costs. So again, it's about our priorities. I never, it's never about that we can't afford, we just gotta go, we just have to be able to do without sometimes. You guys, you guys, you guys still with me on that? Absolutely, so Armand sets up the five additional LLCs, create the operating agreement, put his brother on all five, and guess what? He got $50,000 minimum on each company, which is what? How much? 250000 but then when you show the banks you can use this money responsibly, the operative word responsibly, it can go up. You can go to the bank and ask for what's called a credit limit increase. But then, guess what Armand can do? Because he's been following the teachings of his little bro, Will, he go and set up five more credit partners. And sets up five companies for each credit partner, that's how many companies? How many? Five times five. That was a trick question, y'all. How many companies can he go and get credit on? All 25 companies. This is how we become our own bank. See, the thing about when you understand credit, it's endless. If, if you had one company and there's 50 banks in a 50 mile radius out here in St. Louis, how many of those banks can you go and get credit from? All 50, all 50. Credit does not run out when the banks understand or they see you know how to leverage it properly. And when you put the credit on your business, they can't see the debt, which minimizes your DTI, which stands for what? Debt to income ratio. So when you set up a brand new entity, it looks like you have zero debt, but you may have two or three other companies that have $100,000 of credit on each company. How many people feel they learned something here today? Again, so our goal, our focus with this corner class, yes, we want to come out here and inspire. Yes, we want to come out and love on our people. But more importantly, we want to give you guys the strategies. How many people have been to a, 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 a motivational seminar before? But when you leave, what do you feel like? I'm like, damn, I don't know what to do. No instructions. You feel good for about 75 seconds. Because they didn't give you any, they didn't give you a solution. Oh, they gave you a solution. Y'all want to know what the solution is? Oh, you got to come back to our $15,000 seminar in Miami. They trick you with the Miami part. Some of y'all will catch that way on the way home. They trick you, tell you to come to Miami, you spend 15000 to go to another motivational seminar. But then if you want to know, lo learn the big boy steps, now you got to spend 150000 You spend that 150000 to invest in their real estate packages, but they don't, told you, they don't tell you how to get the money. 
So now you're stuck, not knowing what to do. See, we, the reason we put this corner class together for free, free 99, is we want you guys to get this information. Because when you guys win, we win. Y'all catch that? When you guys win, we win. Because as a community, that's how we can win together. And sometimes we just have to start at, a, at the most minute place in the process of group economics. Everybody write that down, group economics. I was speaking with a good friend of mine, and I was talking to him about some of these concepts. And uh, his family, they're Hispanic. And one of the things he told me, he said, you know what, Will? My family and I took what you said to heart, and what we did was is we pulled our money together. It was about 20 of them, and they all saved up $1,000 and went and bought a luxury vehicle and start renting it out. They did this about, I want to say, maybe a year and a half ago. They now have seven luxury vehicles, all by pulling together $1,000 initially. But yet we don't want to come up with $500 to invest in our financial freedom. So again, it's never about the money. If it's a priority, first of all, I looked at my, me wanting to create a legacy for my family, that was life or death for me. That's how I looked at it. So I, had, I did whatever I had to do legally and ethically to get the money to invest in myself and my financial future. All right, you guys still with me here? Yeah. All right, King Jay here yet? How much time we got, Josh? Five minutes? Okay, so before King Jay comes up, do we have any questions? Or let me ask you guys, so what would you say some of the pitfalls are as entrepreneurs and investors that you guys may go through? Assistance? Systems, okay. Rejection, what else? What else? Lack of info. Okay, what else? What's that? I can't hear you. Okay, analytics, what else? Racism. Mindset, collaboration, funding, okay. I'm going to tell you guys one of the things that I've observed and witnessed over the years. One of the biggest challenges I feel that we've endured is fear. Fear stands for false evaluation appearing real. A lot of times we scared because of what we think is going to happen. We're scared because what we think is going to happen. Want me to prove it to you? Want me to prove it to y'all? They say that the graveyard is the richest place on the world, in the world, because it's filled with people who never wrote the books they want to write, who never opened the businesses they want to open, who never wrote the songs they had stuck in their head, all gripped by fear, worrying about what their friends, family, their broke-ass friends, family, and relatives was going to think about them. We go get our financial advice from the person who's filed bankruptcy 17 times over the most craziest things. So again, we have to take the onus on ourselves to get the information, put ourselves in position, and also understand, I want you guys to know, you're not here for yourself. You guys know that, right? That's right. We're here for our loved ones who were scared to come to the corner because of a little rain. Let Beyonce have a free concert out here. They'd be out here naked. They wouldn't care about the rain. They get, so we're gripped by fear. You know, a lot of times we're scared of success. We're scared of success. But again, family, it's definitely not going to be easy. It's a journey, a journey well worth taking. Me personally, I've had a, a journey of 15 years in entrepreneurship. And one of the things that someone, uh, people frequently ask me, they said, Will, what was the biggest thing or biggest piece of advice that you can give me as a new and up and coming entrepreneur. And I said, you need to learn one word. You guys want to know what that word is? Yeah. Sacrifice. Right. What are you willing to sacrifice? See, I was willing to sacrifice going to the, to the uh, uh, you know, Cancun spring breaks. I was willing to sacrifice going out every Saturday night. I was willing to sacrifice and putting my money away every single paycheck. I was willing to sacrifice from buying a luxury vehicle that I couldn't afford anyway. I went five years without television because I didn't want to poison my subconscious. Last time I checked, Real Housewives of Atlanta was not going to help me become rich. Unless I was the creator of the show, I guess. 
And so understanding that what sacrifice are you willing to make in order for you to create your success, to create your legacy for your family, to become the CEO of your last name, as my brother King Jay always says. All right? You guys still with me? Yes. You guys still with me? Yes. All right, because we're going to bring up my brother here in a few minutes. Y'all ready? Yes. Only the king right here. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm about to have a seat because I don't believe it. Let's go, King Jay. Okay. All right, we're going to give him a second. All right, any other questions? Yes, sir. What's what? Uh, a thousand. Is that? Ten thousand. Dang. I was just so <laughs> scared. All right, what else we got? Any other questions? Y'all mean to tell me y'all don't have any? Now, I don't want y'all beating down my inbox when I leave. Because y'all going to have a million questions. So, what y'all got for me? What's my story? Very good question. So, moved to Las Vegas in 2005. I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And before moving to Las Vegas, my mentor told me, eventually credit will become the new dollar. Didn't know what he meant by that. I moved to Las Vegas, I quickly found out. How many people know, when you have bad credit, it's very expensive. I couldn't buy a car without having a co-signer. Anybody been there before? So only seven of us was broke before? The rest are lying. I'm about to pull y'all credit reports before I leave. Everybody's. <laughs> I'm pulling credit reports before I leave. I'm gonna expose y'all. And so, one of the things I was like, you know what? I'm 26 years old calling myself a man, but I need a co-signer for a vehicle. I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so what I did was I took it upon myself to learn as much as I can about credit based off of that, that gym that my mentor had told me back in 2005. And the reason it was so important for me because everything that I was doing, my credit was a direct barometer of that. King Jake. How many people know your credit score is tied to your insurance rates? Yeah. Yeah. So, you, so if your insurance rates are high, look at your credit. I was speaking to a parent who could not rent an instrument for her daughter because her credit score was bad. How many people know the school zone your kids go to school in is a direct reflection of your credit? That's deep, isn't it? And so I wanted to learn as much as I can about this thing called credit because they said, if you want to hide something from people, what do you do? Well, you just hide it in plain sight, really. They hid it in plain sight, family. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So what I want to do, I'm going to bring up my bro. I call him my little big brother because I'm actually a little older than him. And who's been not only instrumental in changing my life, my family life, but who has, a, I mean, just the compassion to love on our people. Family, we don't have a lot of people that look like us that's out here for free. I'm going to keep saying that. Teaching and coming back and pouring into our people like this. So what I want y'all to do, I need it to be so loud that the cars are rattling on the way crossing the street on Pope Ave. Give it up for my bro, King J. Okay. Okay. That's that St. Louis love. Yeah, what up though? I, what's going on, young king? There you go. What's up, King? How you doing, Queen? Man, I appreciate you guys for coming out just to just to hear some words. Um, as I, I got two black-owned brands on. I gotta shout them out both. Right? I came here and and doing uh, what's this called? Doing real goods. My brother out of Houston gave us this shirt. I love this shirt. This got me going through my day. And then I I had to switch like Black Batman, Black Superman, Young Young Malcolm. And I threw up my man, my brother, uh, uh, Demetrius from Black Money Matters, threw on our custom Landlord Gang shirt. So we represent Landlord Gang. So, so, so lion's coming out for us. And while we're here really is, especially on this weekend, as Father's Day weekend, it's great to see so many of you out here with your, well, we are renaming our children. We, we, we're rebranding our children in our community. What, what they called again? What they called again? What they called again? What they call it again? Yeah. These are our heirs. 
This is a family wealth class. This is an intergenerational family wealth class. This ain't just no house flipping, wholesaling, gotta fix my credit, get by, crumb snatching. This ain't that. This is a family wealth class, intergenerational wealth. Intergenerational wealth is different than generational wealth. See, generational wealth means one generation. I'm talking about how we set up our heirs. Everybody say heirs. I'm talking about how we set up our heirs and our heirs' heirs and our heirs' heirs' heirs by the work that we do today. And that's really what's missing in our community in regards to bridging the wealth gap is that we so, we're so intentional, we're so focused on what we are stopping, stopping the bleeding today, we're putting no seeds in the future or in the seeds in the ground for our future harvest. And I understand, and, and I come from a community in New Jersey where I come from below the poverty line. I, I come from struggle, from obstacles. It was 11th grade high school dropout. Caught my first felony at 18 years old, facing three years of life in prison. Served two and a half years in prison, in seven different prisons. I'm a former three-time felon. I have no college education. But yet I manage a multi-million dollar enterprise. Tens of millions of business and real estate assets. And I'm saying all that to say because I do want to inspire and motivate some of us today because I know it's those obstacles that, and those roadblocks and those barriers, those, it's really a mental and emotional barriers we put up that say that we can't do because I can't because I, I dropped out of high school. I can't because I'm a single mom. I can't because I'm a felon. I can't because I come out of this community. And we tell ourselves all these can'ts, but before we got to the T and can't, we had to get through can. And there has to be some motivation for us to get through these obstacles. And I was actually really beat up this week, right? Like I'm human like the rest of us. And I go through drama like the rest of us. And as an entrepreneur and someone that manages multiple enterprises and is focusing on my heirs and and my wife and our family and our community and pouring in and on the middle of a 10 city tour that now got extended to like five more cities now we're on 15 cities and so through all this work I go through stresses and drama and, and emotional and spiritual and the devil be trying to beat me up too I got people that I took off the street people that I took off dead-end opportunities and put them into my organization, bought them their first suit, who now is trying to double back after they left the organization and take our customers and our products and stealing from the organization. I, I go through that too. And on this entrepreneurial journey, on this journey towards life, the whole point is that we got to accept and we got to embrace and we got to endure all those obstacles, no matter what it is that we come from. And the motivation for that, the reason for that is because if we, if we bail out and we bow out and we don't put any focus on creating something for our heirs or we just get real selfish about blowing money fast right now for us or spending it right now and hope to get it right back for us and hustling for our first name and not hustling for our last name, if that's the kind of big homies we're going to be, if that's the kind of mom and dad and community members we're going to be, we're going to continue to, to fail, to live in poverty, to live in blighted communities, and then blame them and they for why they ain't do for us what we could have did for ourselves. What I'm saying is, if we don't focus and get on our good foot, and we don't get motivated by our legacies, and stop focusing on just right now and temporary satisfaction and not delaying the, the gratitude, if we don't delay it, and we don't put something in the ground, in the soil for later, if we don't think about our heirs, they're going to be in the same situations that we were in, that we grew up in, facing the same obstacles that's frustrating you today. You frustrated by that, that good old corporate trap, that nine to five trap? You frustrated by that college trap? That corner trap, that correctional trap, that cultural trap? So what I'm saying and what I'm going to teach today is not just to motivate and inspire you. What I'm saying is that I've come through an uh, amazing journey, amazing testimony. God gave me amazing endurance. 
one of my heirs, my daughter is standing before you right now. She probably doesn't like when I do this too much, but I'm proud of her. College student here in St. Louis. Yeah. Hometown girl. But, uh, but she was born, I was an 18-year-old dad. Not only was I an 18-year-old dad, I was an 18-year-old dad on a top bunk in an upstate New York prison when she was born. I told her my first time seeing her was on a visiting room floor. She spent nights in trap houses and hotels while I bagged up my inventory from my former career as a street entrepreneur, specifically a street pharmacist. But now I can, because of the sacrifices I made, because of the motivation that she gave me, she's why I left the corner of 10th and Springfield in Newark, New Jersey in 2005 where I made a decision to ask myself, now mind you, your trap might have been different than my trap. So as I tell my story, I want you to think about your trap. That thing that's holding you back, that's not motivating you enough to make the decisions that you have to make for you and your heirs, and your heirs' heirs, what we call our legacy. So in 2005, 25-year-old Jay was on the corner of 10th and Springfield as a three-time felon who just served two and a half years in prison, just completed an 18-month intense supervision parole program, left that parole program, went back to the streets for three more years, just nearly beat another trafficking charge. And 25-year-old Jay had to look around as he's, as he's serving his corner and supplying his corner with heroin and is hustling with gangbangers and slangers had to ask yourself, well, Jay, where are you going to be when you're 30? Right now, your heir is seven years old, but where are you going to be by the time she's 12? Where are you going to be when you're 30, Jay? And I only could imagine two things. You know what that was? Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. Say it with your chest. Yeah. Dead or in jail. I had enough emotional intelligence at 25 years old. I was committed to the game. I started trapping at 15. It was getting ready to die trying. Every time I came, I went through prison and came home from prison. Prison never reformed me. Prison was criminal school. I went to jail, made new connects, made new friends, and made new routes. Came home from prison right back to it, right to the bag. Was committed to that until 25 years old. Nearly 14, 15 years ago, I had to ask myself a real question, like, oh, homeboy. Like, where are you going to be hustling in these streets of Newark, trafficking to Baltimore, running your routes? And I only could picture myself in a tan prison suit behind green bars or my head leaking on a corner. That was my real picture. So I tried to shake it off, like, nah, 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 I got this. Because, see, at 17 years old, I had committed that I was going to be Rich in the game. I was going to be one of the, the kings of the game. I committed to the trap. So I'm like, nah, I, I know I can see a better way out. Because I, I believed it. Then I could still only picture myself dead or in jail. So then the challenge was, well, what are you going to do next? If you know this is a dead-end trap, right? Just like for those of us who are in a 9-to-5 trap, the corporate trap, we call it. If you know that corporate trap is not providing a way for you to create wealth and legacy, which I'm going to explain to you in a second what wealth and legacy is. But if you know that trap, or just aimlessly going to college with just eyes asleep, your eyes closed, you just going to school because they told you to, you don't know what you're going to do. And you don't have no real career, no real, no plan for assets, no plan for abundance. If you're caught in that trap, you've got to really ask yourself, well, what am I going to do differently to change my circumstance? So for me, I got introduced to the mortgage industry and real estate in 2002 while I was on parole. And so I had to ask myself, I said, you know, that mortgage thing wasn't too bad. This, this real estate thing's not too bad. My mom bought a property in the uh, year, I think, 2000. Yeah, 2000. And by 2004, sold that property and made a hundred grand profit in three years with no renovations. And all we did was live there. So I said, man, she cashed out a hundred. Then I remember when I was in mortgages, I made some money, so I said, well, what would happen if I took all my energy, all my tenacity, all my focus, all my hustle, and I put it into another, to another place, another vehicle, 
other than the streets I've tried for 10 years now that have got me a couple cars, I had a couple watches, I had a couple dollars, but had my life and my freedom and my daughter's future in jeopardy forever. Because I couldn't take my energy and do nothing else. But I called myself a hustler. But I thought a hustler could hustle anything. A drug dealer could only sell drugs. I'm going to say it again. A true hustler could hustle anything. Only a drug dealer could sell drugs. And so I walked away that day. I didn't say, you know what, give me three weeks, I'll be right back. Give me two more flips. Give me another month. I knew what my future was heading for. That day, I still had product left. I gave it away. I still had my trap phone. I broke it. I still had connects. I severed ties. And said, so I'm going to take my energy full steam into real estate, full steam into mortgages. Went and got my mortgage license. Went and got my real estate license. Went and bought my first two-family property, 100% financing. Got my first duplex. And I went full steam into real estate from off the corner, not knowing much of what I was doing, not having half the game that I give y'all. But I knew that my alternative was not attractive to me. My alternative was no longer, I didn't have to drive. It, 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 it was no, there was no burn there. There was no burning desire for the alternative. And so I got into real estate full time, only made $2,500 my first nine months. Was ready to quit the game. All this real estate, some bull. See, I knew I should have stayed in the trap. <laughs> but then that ninth month I was going to quit, I closed seven deals and made 13000 Next month, made 30000 Four months later, made 94000 All from endurance, trusting my hustle, and pouring into the game. And less than three years later, I made my first million in real estate, became a multi-millionaire, national icon, a national influencer in the game. Till now, I stand before you nearly 15 years later as the CEO and founder of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. <laughs> Truff Life. If y'all don't know, that's the first black-owned real estate crowdfund in American history. The first black-owned real estate crowdfund in the history of the United States of America. <laughs> While simultaneously building up that organization, the millions of assets under management that we have, also founded the J. Morrison Academy, which sponsors this tour. And under the J. Morrison Academy, I've built that organization in the last five years to Inc. 500's number 588 fastest growing company in the country. Wow. Number 13 fastest growing educational companies. Nice. This the former trapper. Yeah. This the former dope boy. This the former three time felon. This the former wick kid, welfare kid. The free lunch kid. But I took that burning desire and that drive into the real estate industry. I put my head down and I focused and I learned the business. See, that's what I did, which many of us don't take the time to do. I, I, I learned the business. The same way I learned it in a trap. The same way I understood how the routes worked in a trap, how we bagged up. How it was one for 20, two for 35, three for 50, four for 70, six for 100. I ain't forget. But I learned the game. When I got into real estate and entrepreneurship, I put that same kind of energy and learned to game. The same way I know LTVs, ARVs, points, purchase ratios, cap rates, how to find the ROI. 1031 tax exchange, opportunity zone funds. I learned the game. Creative business finance, syndicating deals, underwriting deals. I learned the game, so what happens in our community, what I believe is that the wealthy, the, the wealthiest corporations, the system, intentionally did not tell us, what I'm going to teach you today is a class that we all could have learned in ninth grade. What I'm going to teach you today is a class that we all could have learned in seventh grade. We all could have learned in Sunday school. Yep. What I'm going to teach you today about building family wealth is going to be so lame in terms, so broken down, so, so simple, so relatable, 
You're going to be like, damn, damn, we could have been doing this. But the goal is, again, I don't believe in just blaming others and not doing for myself what I can do for myself. So we didn't have the proper curriculums to teach us legacy and family wealth. So we created our own school and gave us our own curriculum. If we didn't have an economic vehicle for us to be able to invest together and buy back the block, we created our own fund where we all can have ownership and all participate in the profits and get a preferred return and have equity in one company. The Tulsa Real Estate Fund has over 9,400 partners from around the world. 9,400 partners that invested a minimum of $500 to be in position for an 8% preferred return and their future 50% of their share of the profits as owners, as equity owners and partners in this historic fund. That's solution driven. So now we all have to be, again, everything you hear today is not going to matter as much to your family and your heirs if you don't approach it with some level of intensity and burning desire. So I was saying, I was beat up this week. And I went to my brother Mike's house here in St. Louis. He flicking through my YouTube, showing me some of the videos he's been watching. And we went back three years ago to an old video I did on a saying I have called Outwork the Work. I want everybody to say Outwork the Work. Outwork the Work. No, I got to say a little more energy in that. Say Outwork the Work. Outwork the Work. And so, yeah, fool. Outwork the Work, fool. That's how I used to say it. So I'm watching this video, and I'm allowing myself to kind of mentor myself. I'm allowing myself to minister to myself and teach to myself because what Outwork the Work was about was everything I was going through this week. Outwork the Work was the hell with your excuses, the hell with your obstacles, the hell with your journey. No matter how big that plate is in front of you, no matter how much that workload is, no matter how much your family is set behind, you got to outwork the work, fool. Ain't no choice in the matter. And part of that Outwork the Work formula was uh, 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 an acronym I had called BBBP. Three B's and a P. The first B was having a burning desire. The second B was having big, bodacious goals. Like having some goals that, like coming from a three-time felon from a high school dropout to being the CEO of the first black real estate crowdfunding in the history of America. Them kind of goals. Some goals that you think are impossible, something to chase, and having a burning desire behind it. But then outside of having the, the burning desire and the big bodacious goals, you've got to be intentional about those goals. Somebody tell me what intentional means, please. Say it again. Say it again. Intentional means on purpose. And then after you have a burning desire, you have big, bodacious goals. Like, I'm going to take my family from where they're at right now to leave my heirs at least $10 million in assets. Them kind of goals. Yeah. Like something that your friends going to be like, man, you crazy. Them kind of goals. Now you set them kind of goals with a burning desire because your legacy motivates you, your heirs motivate you, your last name motivates you. Then you're intentional about it. You do it on purpose. And then the last is the P. You got to persist. You got to endure. Just because you said it and you hype and you feeling it today, don't mean we're going to get smacked down and beat up later. With all I accomplished, even as a three-time author, two-time best-selling author, and all my business resume, I still fell on financial hardships, still fell on personal hardships. Life still happens. I filed a 2016 Chapter 7 bankruptcy, was just discharged last year. Or early this year. Out working the work. All right, that issue need to be dealt with. But that don't mean I still can't manage businesses, though. That don't mean I still can't push my legacy, though. It don't matter bankruptcy. It don't matter credit. It don't matter life obstacles, divorce, breakups. Whatever it is, you got to have a commitment. You got to have a burning desire to meet those big, bodacious goals. I pour my life out for y'all so I can touch somebody somewhere who might be going through something similar or can at least say that I don't got no excuse I got to get on my grind 
We all go through it. Just accept that. It ain't going to be easy. Accept that. That's what motivates me when I have my tough weeks. And I really feel like crying. Every time I see my brother right here, every week we go on this tour, he asks me how I'm doing, and I let him know. Ain't no, I'm good. I, I put my head in his shoulder and start talking about all my woes for the week. All my woes. But what motivates me to keep going, though, is I got momentum right now. My family has momentum right now. I've agreed to be the CEO of my last name, the CEO of my family. And my heirs deserve for me to put my best effort forward to leave them in the best position as possible so that they have the best next step up to leave their heirs, which are my heirs as well, in the best position possible to reverse something that's been in our family, which is the poverty curse. That's my goal. My goal is to make as much headway to give her and her sister and any future siblings as much of a head start as I can, not for Jay to look as good as he can, not for Jay to have the latest everything that come out that's on the gram, not for Jay to have the latest bad shoe, bag, car, biggest crib. Our home is modest. I don't got to have the biggest crib right now. It's not my goal. My goal is not to impress you. That's not my goal. My goal is not to be the one who got the biggest this and the biggest that so you feel good about Jay. No, I need them to feel good about our last name. And until we get that kind of mentality and adopt that and get off this competing thing that we do, or what I call trying to keep up with the Joneses and our last name ain't Jones, I don't even get caught up into that. Oh, the new Rolls Royce race truck out. Oh, this truck out. Oh, boy, you gonna get it? You gonna get it? I don't gotta have the new and the latest. That. Now, mind you, I'll treat myself when I so choose. Strategically, within my overall plan to build family wealth. I'll reward myself along the way. But my life ain't living to keep up with people or to keep up with Joneses or to keep up with, with, with the Graham. It's those kind of disciplines and those kind of sacrifices. So here's how our lecture starts today. I need everybody to say, we gonna learn today. I want y'all to say it again, we gonna learn today. All right, so the first thing, again, this is an intergenerational family wealth class. So the first thing we got to do as a people, we talk about building wealth and building legacy, we got to understand those big bodacious goals, exactly what that goal is. We can't build wealth if we haven't identified wealth. We don't even know what wealth looked like. So I need y'all to help me today. We're going to learn together. What is the definition of wealth? Let's go. It's like a good buck, 50 of us out here. Abundance, assets, we forever straight. Financial freedom. Residuals. Ownership. Anybody else? All right, here's how we go. Time. Here's how we're going to do this. We like to learn in groups. So we're going to take my man, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. My man with the red hat right here. You ain't got, no, you ain't got to go nowhere. Stay right there. We're going to use you as the barrier, though. So everybody on this side of you, this left side, you all going to be one team. Everybody on the right side of them, everybody to the back, all you all are going to be one team. Y'all going to be my saints, and y'all going to be my Lou. All right? So I need my saints to make some noise. Woo! All right, Lou, turn up on them. Woo! All right, let's go. So this is how we're going to learn this. So in order for us to build family wealth, we got to identify wealth. So here's what wealth is. I need my saints to say, an abundance of assets. An abundance of assets. Say it again, an abundance of assets. An abundance of assets. I need my Lou to say, that supersede liabilities. One more time, Lou, you're sounding weak. That supersede liabilities. Let me break this down for us real quick. Wealth is an abundance of assets
that supersede liabilities. We're going to add a little piece to that. And debt. Liabilities and debt. We're going to say debt that together. So let's talk about the abundance piece. What does that mean to have an abundance of assets? What the hell does that mean? A lot, unlimited, overflowing. So we're not talking about just you got a few properties, you got a couple of dollars, but it's having an abundance, an overflow, overkill, extra, an abundance of assets. So let's talk about what, what are some things that are assets? What are these assets that we must have an abundance of? Somebody said real estate. Real estate, stocks, life insurance, precious metals, cryptos, CDs, certificate of deposits, not music CDs, y'all, certificates of deposit, CDs, bonds, assets being things that hold or have the potential to appreciate in value. Everybody say appreciate. appreciate. Appreciate meaning go up in value. So have an abundance of things that hold value or appreciate in value or can be leveraged to create more value such as even having cash. So if we have an abundance of assets that appreciate in value that's our abundance. It needs to supersede our liabilities. What do you mean by supersede? Overcome. Surpass, overcome, be more than. So we got to have a bunch of, an extra, an overflow of assets, things of value that overcome, that beat out our liabilities and debt. What are some liabilities? Cars, clothes, student loan debt, bad debt, rent, all things we do on a day-to-day -day basis, our spending habits. So what we say when we talk about building family wealth, what we're saying is we're committing to do the things that are intentional on purpose to start stacking up racking up stacking to the side more assets things that hold and grow in value having an abundance of those while we supersede while we overflow that with our liabilities and our bad debt so keeping those expenses low keeping them cars and the liabilities because cars what they depreciate in value Soon as you drive off the lot. I don't care if it's a new Lamborghini. The day you drive off the lot, it now has went down in value instantly. So we can have a bunch of those. They look so good and so pretty, but they're not doing a benefit for our heirs. So the first goal for us is to be intentional about having an overflow of assets that overcome our liability and our debt then we are on a track to building intergenerational family wealth. So that means that there's going to be some things that we got to do in our lifetime, some purchases that we want to make, some trips that we want to take, some things that we want to do that might got to get a little pause on them until we met a bigger bodacious goal. See, the looking good goal, that's easy. People, say, people see somebody drive by in a Lamborghini, but man, I want to do what he do. I'm like, he was just a car valet. <laughs> you chasing somebody because of how they looking and not really what the substance is, is the assets, is the value. So as we do this, we do this and the only way it gets done in our families is somebody has to agree in the family to be the CEO. What does CEO mean? Say it again. 
One more time, please. The chief executive officer. Let me break that down for you. I told you, this is a class we could have taught in seventh grade, ninth grade, Sunday school. The chief executive officer of an organization or the CEO is better defined as the leader and visionary of the organization. I need my saints to say leader. leader. I need my Lou to say visionary. visionary. I need my saints to say leader. leader. I need my Lou to say visionary. visionary. So somebody in the family got to step up, knowing that we ain't got no family wealth. Somebody got to say, all right, man, fine. It's on me. I got us. Because if everybody for the family scrambling around just doing them for their first name, yeah. who the hell's looking out and being a visionary for us and our last name for the future? So then we look up and everybody on three scream your last name. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah we look up and that last name is broken 30 years. Because everybody's scrambling, running around trying to fend for themselves and their first name. And nobody stepped up to be the old school patriarch or matriarch for our last name, saying, you know what, I got us. I got us. I'm going to make sure, I want to ball out right now, but fine. I'm going to make sure that I make the disciplined decisions as the leader of our last name organization, as the visionary, the one that's looking ahead for our family. I got, I'm going to put us on our back and make sure that we straight. One of my protégés, Isaac Grace, who did so well last year, he started with me at 20 years old. He's now 25 years old. He did over 300000 last year with a $900,000 business, starting as a GED graduate, been under my mentorship for five years. And he texted me yesterday, he just closed the deal, made 38000 right. He sent me his check. He always, you know, screenshot his checks. Like, look, look, big bro. And yeah, well, he, no, he ain't more than wholesale. He, he does wholesale strategy. He also develops. He also is a landlord. He has assets. See, some people just wholesale. See, wholesale and real estate, I'm explaining, is being a middleman or middlewoman, and you're giving everybody the deals. You're making a little check, but everybody got the assets but you. See, my students know better than that. They know to know how to wholesale when they need to, but they know to acquire them assets and start stacking up wealth. Portfolios, residual income, passive income, cash flow, appreciation, equity, tax advantages, tax mitigation, corporate veils. My students know the game. That's right. So he was saying to me yesterday, he said, Big Bro, you like the CEO for our community. Being the leader and vision. While we do this class, I'm trying to put our village on the game of what I learned over the last 15 years from working with some of the wealthiest families on the East Coast some of the most successful business advisors and consultants in my organization, I'm just translating back to us all I learned coming from the same block. This is the game they're playing. They, the they that we, we always talk about, this is the game that they are playing out there. They playing the family wealth game. Somebody steps up and says, I got us. Then they start making plays for the family on how we start to build wealth and making some hard, disciplined decisions. So, who here today is committed to being that person for their last name? Raise your hand. Now, you just made a big commitment right now. You made a big commitment right now. That means you're going to have to make some tough decisions as the CEO, chief executive officer for, say your last name again, for that last name. You have to lead them. In order to lead them, you got to be prepared to damn self. An uninformed or uneducated executive, an uninformed or uneducated leader is not a good leader at all. You're going to lead them to doom if you yourself don't know the game. So we understand the first part of wealth and now the importance of leadership and legacy. So now we're going to talk about the legacy piece. Again, this is an fa intergenerational family wealth class. Now, when it comes to legacy, somebody tell me what legacy means, please. We can't keep hashtagging Black Wall Street and Black Money Matters and Black Lives Matters, and, but we don't know what legacy is. What you leave behind? Anyone else? Setting up your heirs? All right, this is what we're here for. We're going to learn today. 
Legacy. It's the amount of assets and money one leaves behind for their heirs. That's legacy. So we're talking about building intergenerational family wealth, we're talking about building legacy. So I need my saints to say, the amount of assets, the amount of assets. my looters say, and money. and money, I need everybody to say, one leaves behind, one leaves behind. For, their heirs. for their heirs. Yo, if we ain't focused on that, we're going to always lose, we're going to always be in last place. What motivated me to start educating even doing these classes is because our community, our village, has been in last place when it comes to family wealth in this country for, we've been in last place for 450 years every single year on year. I've read that in 2012. And I'm like, wait, so if I know all this information, if I'm beginning to build wealth, what can I do to catch the rest of the village up? Because what's the point of me being an all-star player on a losing team? So we've been in last place for every year, for over 450 years, every single year, in the family wealth statistics. We've been in last place, I said, as a CEO type and leader type and visionary type, I'm going to do whatever I can do to do something about it. Whether that's innovating a street class, whether that's creating an online school, whether it's college lectures, whether it's my inmate, the real estate program, whether it's writing books, whether it's starting a fund. If you look at every single one of my business models, they are social entrepreneur business models. In every business that I manage or operate, it has some kind of social impact, as well as being able to turn a profit, because a business should. That's the win-win. Fair exchange, no robbery. But my point is, while I'm pouring into you all, this is the appetizer. We're going to get into the class. It's the appetizer. But I need us to understand that this is just bigger than the short game we've been playing. We've been playing the short game, the right now game. This is the right later game. This is the long ball game. So we're here to build legacy through building wealth and leaving assets in abundance for our heirs because they deserve so. And because we know the challenges we had growing up, and I think we would appreciate it if someone had the opportunity to do and give us a better head start than many of us had. Right. And even if you had a great head start, it's your obligation to make it a greater head start, regardless. So we talked about wealth. We talked about building assets, leaving a legacy. And now let's talk about to how we get that accomplished. See, what we believe in the J. Morrison Academy, and I want to tell you guys, tomorrow at 10 a.m., we have a nice crowd today, at 10 a.m., indoors, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., we fly all over the country, no matter how jet lag we feel, we get up early in the morning to make it to our 10 a.m. class to pour into you and teach you. Tomorrow's a class Whereas for mothers and fathers and families, all children are free, under 18. The class is only a $47 class. This ain't no $300 class, although it's $3,000 game and information. But tomorrow, I'm going to teach you and show you all, Will and I, how to boost your credit score, how to leverage your credit or non-credit to do no money down deals, and most importantly, I want to show you all how to start and begin to acquire what we call anchor properties or apartment buildings. Every father, every family deserves to have an apartment building under their portfolio, under their belt. And it's not even that hard that you think it is. No one just told you yet or you didn't focus to go sit down and learn it. Now you got the opportunity. For tomorrow, I'm going to give you the beginning game on how to acquire apartment buildings, no money down. No fluff, real food at 10 a.m. Let's see who shows up. 
Simple as that. Let's see who shows up. This is the same game that my mentor taught me charges $30,000 for a weekend and give you the same game, give you $47. Tomorrow, we call it our million air class. Air, H-E-I-R. This is to prepare you for your heirs, to lead those assets. So what we believe in the Jay Morrison Academy, we believe in this fundamental education for building wealth called the RBCs. What's RBC stand for? Anybody know? Everybody say real estate. Real estate. Everybody say business. business. And everybody say credit. credit. What we mean by that is, in the English language, we all learned in schools the fundamentals of the ABCs. The ABCs is how we put words together. How we put words together, how we put sentences together, how we put paragraphs together, how we communicate how we learn, how we read. It's the fundamentals for how we become intellectual, or the ABCs. The fundamentals for how you begin to build family wealth is having a proficient knowledge, an efficient knowledge, being informed on real estate, business, and credit. There are multiple streams of ways to build wealth. I believe in life insurance as well. I believe in diverse portfolios and stocks and bonds and understanding all that. But before you even get burdened down with all the sophistication of building family wealth, the most basic thing that we all can do is understand the fundamentals of real estate, business, and credit. Everybody say RBCs. RBCs. Let me tell you why. We start with real estate. While real estate is one of the main business principles, practices, assets that we need to get more familiar with is because real estate runs the world. This corner we're at right now is what? Real if we did it across the street in the park, what was that? Real if we did it downtown at the hotel, what was that? Real if we did it at the community center, what was that? Real at the local high school, what was that? Real the hospital you were born in was what? Sit down. We do this survey every class. And it's never our intention to embarrass nobody because we all family. We love y'all. We ain't trying to embarrass nobody. But I want everybody to be honest. I want everybody to be honest. By show of hands right now, who here lives somewhere? <laughs> this is why real estate has all the power. Every product that we have in our hands, that phone you got in your hand, that plastic it was made from, came from plants. Plants came from what? Real Land, real estate. Every metal, every gold, the paper, everything that we have in touch, the earth is one big bowl of real estate. Whoever owns the most land wins. Whoever knows how to own the most land wins. We haven't even gone past that part, the how-to. So we can't even acquire. So one of the first folks is right now, 10% of the American population own 88% of all the real estate. 10% of the American population own 88% of the real estate. That means the other 90% are the customers to the 10%. They are the tenants, the customers. Why we know real estate makes the most sense for our families and why you have to be intentional to learn it, all we're doing at the J. Morrison Academy is giving you the relatable, translatable curriculum for you to be able to learn this in the easiest of ways and learn it from people that have done it in real life at the highest level. Why we know this makes sense is because I can draw a house here. This house can be a building, it could be a hotel, it could be an apartment complex. But why real estate makes the most sense for us is because by owning real estate, even starting with the roof over your head, I got a book there called Lord of My Land, Five Steps to Home Ownership. You want to know how to buy your first house? I spell it out in five simple steps. 
fighting the fear, getting pre-approved, evaluating your deal, putting in your offer, closing your deal, managing your deal. But why this makes so much sense is because over time, just by living somewhere, I'm not talking about HGTV flip this house. I'm talking about over time, just by living somewhere, properties over time because of supply and demand appreciate in value. That appreciation then creates what's called equity. Equity is, for those taking notes, equity is the difference between what you owe on a property and what it's worth. If you owe zero on a property and it's worth 200,000, you got 200,000 equity. If you owe the bank or a mortgage company or a private lender or a grant, if you owe 100,000 on a property and it's worth 200,000, you have 100,000 in equity. Equity is the difference between what you owe on a property and what it's worth. That equity though is real value for you to be able to tap into later and leverage it through refinances, home equity lines of credit, home equity loans. You can tap into this equity tax-free and then use this equity to go buy more real estate and more assets. All by just doing what you're doing anyway and living somewhere. Outside of that equity in a property and appreciation, if you begin to rent the properties. You buy a multifamily, four family, two family, or a single family, then move out to another unit. You can keep that single family or multifamily and begin to get passive income or rental income. You can live in one unit, rent the other three out, live for free, or get paid while you live and while it appreciates in value, and you get what we call rental income and cash flow. Passive income, residual income. These are all the assets we're talking about. The abundance is coming, step by step. Then on top of the cash flow, the equity, the appreciation, by owning a real estate asset, you then have power and control. You own the air rights above the real estate, the right to build up on the asset and create more units. You own the mineral rights below the real estate and the land around it. The right to rent your lot out for parking, the right to farm on it, the right to dig on it. So by owning the real estate, the land, you got the power and control, the air rights, the mineral rights, the equity, appreciation, the cash flow, residual income. And then, if that wasn't good enough, if that wasn't good enough, you then have many, many, many tax advantages from owning real estate. You can write off certain closing costs when you close your deal. The interest on your mortgage you can write off at times. You can depreciate the whole value of the asset over 27 and a half years. You can depreciate all the personal tangible property in the asset. Anything that you take off with a screwdriver or a hammer in a full-time investment property, you can depreciate from your earned income. Meaning that if you made 70000 this year, but you owned a real estate asset and all the value of the personal tangible property inside the cabinets, the hot water heater, the boilers, the sinks, the doors, if all those things were worth 20000 and you made 70000 this year, you can write, take that depreciation off your earned income of 70000 and now instead of paying taxes on 70000 you're paying taxes on 50000 now. Therefore, retaining more cash and money for your heirs. All through one vehicle, and we all agree we had to live somewhere anyway. And I know here in St. Louis, you guys have innovative aldermen and councilmen and wardmen and whatever y'all call them here. Aldermen, right, I said it. But you have folks that are implementing pop programs and policies for dollar properties and other kinds of opportunities to get into real estate assets. But then we're not intentional about learning how to put ourselves in position. Everybody say in position. position. That's all it boils down to. Preparation plus opportunity equals success. If you don't put yourself in position because you're informed, you will have opportunities fly by you that could have been 
wealth and legacy and assets and abundance for your heirs, but it flew by you because you ain't know no better. Because you don't know enough about enough. You don't know how to evaluate a good deal when you do see it. Because you're not putting yourself in position. So we know that real estate makes sense from these perspectives plus more. Then we get into the how can we on real estate. But how can I buy? Well, first and foremost, from anyone that's looking to live or move in a single family, condo, townhouse, or anything what we call one to four units, which is considered residential real estate. Matter of fact, even one to four units with a store attached. If that store, if those store units are less than a four units, it's called mixed-use residential real estate, or residential mixed-use. You can buy anything one to four units, even one to four units with a store, for as little as 3% down. 3% down payment. That means 3,000 down for every $100,000 house. 6,000 down for a $200,000 house. Even four units, four units with a store. Nine grand down for a $300,000 house. You can buy with 3% down. I'm going to go back to our other chart real quick. I want to show you something. I want you all to look at this. Don't look at it like, okay, Jay speaking some game. He's giving us a lecture, but somebody's talking at me, talking to me. I want you to look at it as I'm showing you that if we don't put ourselves in a position that we own, this is what happens. You end up being a lifelong tenant, a lifelong customer. And now, after 12 years of renting, you gave your cash flow to somebody else's last name, somebody else's family. You created equity for somebody else's family and their last name and their abundance. You gave somebody else's family tax advantages. You gave somebody else power and control, air rights and mineral rights, all off of your back. Look at it that way. And there's a time and place to rent. But you should always put yourself in position to, as often as you can, own and control. Because if you don't, answer this question for me, please. If you, own, if you rented a property for 30 years, how much money do you get back at the end? But once you rent it for 70 years, how much money do you get back at the end? No matter how good you take care of the property, how good you mow the lawn, Y'all feel like it's your house? If you don't really own the property, all you did over those years was pay somebody's 30-year mortgage off. You paid their whole mortgage down from 80 grand down to zero. And now they got all the equity to tap into to use for a future asset. They got all the benefits and cash flow off your back because you weren't intentional. That should piss you off. That should motivate you. Because you simply could have lived somewhere anyway. If that's all you did was live somewhere anyway, pay this down for 30 years, and one day when you go, your heirs at least have one asset and some equity and a roof over their head to inherit. That's the least you could have gave them. Look at it that way. So we talked about 3% down. Another strategy for buying homes, and mind you, this is the beginner's class. Y'all want the advanced class? 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. I will give you the game. I will lay it out on a platter. Outside of 3% down, you can have multiple co-borrowers when applying for a mortgage. Meaning, if you're saying money's your problem, it don't all got to be on you. We're talking about family legacy. Get with your family. Get together. You got three folks that's renting and saying, let's make a strategic plan to be co-borrowers on a loan together and put ourselves in position for some family wealth. You can have two foot people, three, four, five, six borrowers on one loan application. Pulling your money together, pulling your assets together to put it. Now, mind you, is it, a, is it forever plan? No. But is it a stepping stone? Is it a chess move? Maybe. Outside of multiple co-borrowers and 3% down, you also can use 
the future rental income to qualify for a mortgage. Meaning, if you're living in one unit and you're buying a multifamily, but you don't financially qualify on paper, the banks will take a percentage of your future rental income, between 70 and 90%, depending on the bank. So let's say you're getting 1,000 for these units, or 3,000 a month, and you're living in one unit, or 36,000 a year, the bank will give you, on that $36,000 a year, they'll give you just say 70% of a future rental credit. Meaning, if you make $25,000 a year at your job, the banks will take 70% of the 36,000 that your rental income would bring you in the future, and they'll say, we'll add another 25,200 towards your actual income to qualify you. So now the bank sees you as making 50,200 a year as opposed to your normal 25,000, calculating the future rental income you might make to put you in a position to be a landlord, which we call Lord of your land. So when I was 25, going to one of my multifamilies that had four acres of land with it, I was getting out, and one of my tenant's children, I'm hopping out, I'm on some just young boy stuff, 25, I got my fitted hat on, my sweats on, come from the gym, I'm just going to check out my property. But their children, this woman's like twice my age, her children's like, the landlord's here, the landlord's here. I'm like, oh shit, that's me. <laughs> like, I'm the one they're talking about. Like, they scramble, I'm coming, they scrambling. The landlord's here. And it really dawned on me that day. That's not just I'm the landlord. I'm the lord of the land. I'm the big homie. I'm the shot caller. And that's something that all our families deserve and enjoy. Imagine pulling up to your 98 units. Your 330 units. Your 8 units. Your 12 units. And that's yours. That's your family. That's your last name. I gave my heir... My daughter, an assignment to go to, to our 28 units of student housing and to do an assessment for me. I want you to go through, as a college student, I want you to go through our student housing, and I want you to tell me what can we improve in our student housing so other people's kids are living like we would want them to live. I want you to interview our tenants, our students, and our student housing. But imagine giving your children, your heirs, those experiences to go check up on your apartment building. What kind of seeds does that plant for them? I know me growing up, I'd never seen myself or us in that position. We was the ones scrambling at the landlords here. <laughs> that was us. Oh, he pulling up. But we got the power, what I'm trying to say is we got the power to put our families in that same position. But it's a matter of will we focus and be intentional about it? Or do the nightlife mean more? Do the bottles and sparkles mean more? Do the vacations mean more? Do the Valentine's Day mean more? Do the birthdays mean more? We'll complain about our situation and we ain't got the money to do this, but your kids ain't missed a birthday yet. You ain't missed a Christmas yet. You ain't missed a Valentine's Day yet. You ain't missed a vacation yet. But you ain't got no assets to leave behind for your heirs. You got to ask yourself, yo, if I die today, God forbid, if God took me today, you got to, especially my kings, my men, you got to ask yourself, yo, if one of these young boys wild out today, if something happens to me today, what have I left behind for my family to be better than when I came? I call this lesson the baller starter kit. How dare you go out bowling out, buying cars and $700 belts and all that as a grown man. You got a closet full of designer shoes and designer this and your lease payment out of this world. You got life insurance on your car, your phone, but you ain't got a life insurance on your life. You got life insurance on everything else, a phone, but you ain't got life insurance on your life. The ball of starter kids, yo, before you ball out, everybody, men, women, kings, queens, before you ball out, first and foremost, 
You need to be operating, there's a B right there, off a family budget. First and foremost, you should know your money well. If you don't know what you spent last month, what you spent last quarter, last three months, and last year, you, you, you losing at your job. You're a poor CEO. Fire yourself. What kind of CEO and what kind of money come in and out the organization? Oh, I'm going to just spend it. I'm going to get it back. You don't even know what you spent to know what to get back. Or what the opportunity cost of that money could have been for your heirs. Next part of the ball starter kit. Outside of having your budget, you need to focus on getting that life insurance policy. Go sit down with somebody. I got a bunch of game on this. I ain't going to go down that rabbit hole right now, but I'm going to tell you. Something happened to me, mine going to be straight. Go get in the game. Figure it out. I don't care if you got a quarter million dollar policy, cost you 40, 50, 60, 70 bucks a month. But you'll get an eighth of weed every week, though. But you die today, your heirs, what they, they going to smoke your bag up? You going to leave your heirs your loud pack? Not focused. That ain't their fault. That's your fault. Outside of your budget and your life insurance, listen, you got to own some type of real estate asset. You got to. You got to. There's land all over the country, $1,000 for an acre, $2,000 for an acre, $5,000 for an acre. Go buy a house, sit on it. Same money you're spending on frivolous stuff. Go own an asset for your family. Go own something substantial to leave behind. Then we get into, if you can, you should have some types of stocks or businesses. Either a business you run, a business you invest in, franchise, or some shares of a business through stocks. This is the basics. Before you go balling out, Cover the foundation first. Take care of home base first. Make sure they straight. So this is my little mini lesson on my, on my baller starter kit. Is know your money. Put some in case on your life. Easily put yourself in position for a real estate asset. Own stocks and businesses. And lastly, Not yourself, but invest in your credit. And I'm going to say what we call, and I'm going to explain to you in a second, your credit and cash ecosystem. I'm going to break it down for you in a minute. We spend so much money on frivolous things. Again, we talk about the RBCs. I'm giving you all the minimum of what you got to learn about real estate, business, and credit to put your family in position. So on the real estate side, I'm showing you is multiple ways to buy your first home, first multifamily, the benefits of owning that home or real estate asset. We can get into, which we'll cover a little bit tomorrow, the multiple strategies we talked about earlier of wholesaling real estate. This is so simple, so basic, I don't even waste my time. It's simply positioning yourself, understanding how to market for, for discounted properties, contracting those properties, so you have what's called the purchase rights of the properties and then selling off your purchase rights to somebody else with more money than you or who wants the property and you make a fee in between by selling or signing your contract. Very simple, basic. You can get into properties and again, buy low, sell high. It's called flipping real estate. In order to do it effectively, you got needed to know how to find the real estate, how to have the proper company structure so you're protecting yourself in your deal, understand how to evaluate the actual opportunity, what's the purchase price, what's my all-in cost, my carrying cost, what's the ARV or after repair value, how do I find that value, and you got to know how to be able to build a team so your contractors, your realtors, your title agents, your attorneys don't get over on you. I'll teach you all of that on a platter. But you could buy low, sell high. You can get into real estate, 
and say, you know what? I don't want to flip it. I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want to wholesale and middleman it. I want to hold it, holding real estate, and I want to receive the rental income from these units or the cash flow. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about at 10 a.m., apartment buildings, the big assets, and then ways to take these apartment units down, no money down. What we call syndicating real estate. I'll put our community on game. I'm going to give you the game. So the more you know about this, you could drive by your community and see one of these and understand the questions you got to ask, who you need on your team, to even evaluate this though it's a good opportunity. If we can't do that, if you don't understand the prices, if you don't understand the going rate, if you don't understand how to evaluate these assets, we can't never acquire the assets. Not intelligently, not strategically, not in from an informed perspective. So I'm trying to, what's that? Okay. So we have these real estate strategies and much, much more goes deep, y'all. But a dope part about it, what I'm trying to tell you all from someone that's, I was thinking about the other day, I was like, man, I done seen a lot of millions. I ain't saying I'm like, I was actually like proud of myself. I'm like, damn, bro, you actually did it. Like, you've really seen like M's come to your account, like off the, like off the, I was, I was scraping the plate. This ain't come easy. So I was broke at 30. Like preparing for bankruptcy, like broke, broke. Like no car broke. Like borrow money from my mom broke as a grown man. After being a millionaire, first time, I'm double back on them. Double back on them. I'm like, yo. And what I'm trying to say is that I'm telling y'all it could be done. I know how to do it. But how I'd be able to put myself in position is because I could look at any real estate asset in any city, any community, and evaluate it in a matter of minutes. I know the game. And when I talked about that credit piece, here's why the credit piece is so important. We talk about the RBCs. And tomorrow we're going to really dive in on businesses. One of the biggest things, we say RBCs, real estate business. Well, we look at real estate as a business. But we understand how owning our own business, how we can leverage that through so many different ways, again, to continue to create wealth for our families. But I want to talk about the credit piece real quick and what Will and I have established over the last few years. That credit and cash ecosystem, everybody should be investing in this. Because this is really where I cracked the wealth code. So this is probably one of this. And I got one more lesson that I got to give you. Actually, I'm going to say this for last. I'm going to come back. I want to give you this perspective when it comes to business and our money and investing. If we're going to do business together, or you're going to do business for your heirs, we got to understand this lesson, what we call opportunity cost of money. What opportunity cost is, is this. This is what everybody got to know. These are the most critical lessons I need you all to focus in on me for. If you got 100000 10,000 or a million dollars. I don't care if you got a thousand dollars or 10 million. We got to understand what money, everyone got the same problem. That's where can I park my money to where it can make me more money than where it's currently at. So you and the wealthy person have the same problem. If you got 10,000 in cash or a hundred thousand or a million, that cash is earning you 0% return on your investment. Or 0% ROI a year. Cash is sitting there. Actually, it loses you 3% a year because the cost of living goes up 3% because of the inflation rate. The cash is sitting there. If you put that cash to a checking account, that checking account will get you maybe 0.001%. You're talking about 10% of $10,000 is $100. 1% is $10. One tenth of percent is a dollar. 0.001 percent. You're talking about 
10 cents or a penny on your money over the course of a year in a checking account. That three grand, that one grand, that 10 grand in your checking account right now. Go ask your banker. How much interest am I earning on this money over the year? What's my rate? Then you wise up, you might put it in a certificate of deposit or a CD or a savings account. And you got to tie that up for two or three years and maybe get you 2%. So now you're making 200 on 10,000, 2,000 on 100,000, or 20,000 on a million. You might wise up, you got that IRA, that 401k, that 403b, that pension account. Your pension might be earning you a whopping 4 or 5%. So now you're making 500 on 10,000, 5,000 on 100,000, or 50,000 on a million. So the question we gotta ask ourselves, so there's two lessons out of this. And why I say being informed is how you start building wealth. It's for those caught in that corporate trap, and you got that 401k, that pension account, those caught in that cash trap, or anywhere in between, you gotta ask yourself, even if my money was earning me 5%, or, or $5,000 a year on 100000 Do I have enough capacity, wherewithal, strategy? Can I take my same 100000 that's sitting in my 401k or 403b, transfer it to a self-directed IRA, to a checkbook LLC, and can I make more than 5000 a year on my $100,000? We think we can, but are we really in position? Do you know how to evaluate a business? Do you know how to onboard staff? Do you know how to create our company, brand our company, get our EIN for our company, our DUN number for our company? Do you know how to do our proper invoicing, our offboarding, evaluating our deals? See, we always say we got a money problem, but we can throw a bag in your lap right now, you're going to fumble it. So understand this is not just about us and what we can do with the money. The lesson I want to teach you tomorrow, though, is that there's private partners all throughout the world who have the same problem, who are wealthy, who are looking for opportunities to invest their money and are looking for people to invest their money with. So it's not just about you and where your capital is sitting, but for those who are saying they got a cash problem, I'm going to teach you tomorrow at 10 a.m., how to use this opportunity zone strategy to find cash partners all throughout the country and throughout the world who will fund your deals if you can prove your deals are a better place to park their money than where it's currently at. That's the opportunity cost game and the game they're playing out there. So when we come to the credit piece, why this credit piece is so important This is where we truly crack the wealth code. I'm giving everybody, like, we got to run with this game. When it comes to the credit piece, we got to understand this credit, this new credit ideology. See, we were taught to be scared of credit, be scared of debt, be scared of cards. And we haven't realized that this is all a paper game. There's over five, excuse me, there's $50 trillion dollars of cash, coins, and currency in the world. $50 trillion of cash and currency and coins. There's over $230 trillion of credit and debt in the world. I need everyone to say this together. I need all credit can be rebuilt. Can be rebuilt. Say rebuilt. rebuilt. Say restored. restored. Say repaired. repaired. And say recycled. recycled. This is our community new credit ideology. It's come to the understanding with that no matter where your credit is at, current day, or where it may be in the future, if you should try an opportunity and it does not work out, it's nothing for you to trip over, whether it's an $8,000 loan or an $8 million loan or an $80 million loan. If the opportunity doesn't work out, nobody's pulling up on you. They're not running in your crib. They're going to send you a letter. You're not understanding me. If you get $80 million to develop the community and your plan somehow does not work out, although it was a thorough plan, although it was well executed, 
But things happen in business, things happen in the world, things happen with the money markets, and it did not work out. 80 million! They're not pulling up on you. You're probably getting more drama over $80 on a corner than you would 80 million from a bank. So you understand that you can try opportunities leveraging credit to get access to endless amounts of cash, and the only consequence is that you would have to rebuild, restore, or repair your credit to recycle it again, and then learn our strategy, the goddess is layered, of understanding personal credit, family credit, business credit, and credit partners. This is what we're missing as a community. I'm trying to tell you the game. Think about it. If you and your partners, you and your family, if all of you all are investing into your credit health, your credit profile health, instead of the vacations, instead of the nightclubs, instead of the sparkles, instead of the Valentine's Day, but making sure everybody's credit worthy, all of you can leverage that credit for easy funding. We're offering unsecured business funding. $57,000 average on the first round of funding. No tax returns needed, no W-2s needed on a brand new LLC. You can start a brand new company with a healthy credit profile and get tens of thousands of dollars of unsecured credit extended to you for business or real estate endeavors. Facts. Not to mention FHA loans, VA loans, conventional loans, unconventional private financing, bridge funding, gap funding, mezzanine financing, and all the other mechanisms of leveraging credit. Home equity lines of credit, refinances. Listen, that's, there's $230 trillion of credit out there. So if we understand that, hey look, my credit is 550 right now. So I'm gonna get mine, I'm gonna invest in mine so I'm good in the next eight to 18 months. But in the meanwhile, we're going to start with yours, King, because you're good right now, so we're going to take the first property with yours, but if yours don't work out, that's cool. You go back in the system and get repair and recycle. But the queen, she already on board, so she's going to get her business credit already cracking. And if your whole family is on its accord, your whole group is on its accord, and if we all get an average of $57,000 to $100,000 of funding, and now it's... Five of us, we got between a quarter million and a half million dollars of access to the bank's money. Everybody say TBM. TBM. That's the bank's money. I'm showing you how 10 of y'all could get together and get a half million dollars in a matter of months. Months. All by taking your focus off the shiny things and putting your focus onto this credit and cash ecosystem. And if what you try it should work, or it should come close to working because you should do it from a perspective of being informed. This is why I say being educated and informed is being in a position. So you're not making dumb shots with your credit. I ain't saying take a dumb shot. Take a wise shot. So you learn the game, you sit your ass down, you figure out, okay, well, Jay talking all this, ARVs and LTVs and purchase ratios, ROIs and cap rates, oh, I'm going to figure it out now. You learn the game, how to evaluate deals so you're not putting yourself at extreme risk and your partner's extreme risk, then you go and use your leverage to take down opportunities in your community. Go flip them, go leverage them, go hold them, go rent them, go control them, go make your money, build your assets. There's access to a virtually endless bag. And then if you can knock off your feet, you just focus on getting rebuilt, restored, repaired, and recycle that mug again. While your partner's up next. You ain't got to live broke and struggling. You just got to focus. That's it. That's the name of the game. That's how the wealthy play. They come together. They have syndicates. I'm teaching tomorrow, 10 a.m., syndications. They say, well, what you got? Yo, what you got? What you got? What you got? All right, I got this opportunity. But see, they're all on the same page because when they have an opportunity, they can lay out the performer, and everyone understands what the net operating income is, what the cap rate is, what the expenses are, what the liabilities are and where the opportunity is. See, if we ain't sophisticated enough to do that, we can't make no money and do business together. Every class I ask this question, and the number should increase because we live stream these events, so people should be watching it throughout the country, throughout the world. But right now, by show of hands, 
Who here in under 10 seconds can come teach this corner class audience how to find an ROI, return on investment? Raise your hand. Look around. Look around. Everybody, look around. How are we going to do business together? How are we going to bridge the, the poverty gap, the wealth gap, when out of nearly 200, we ain't got one that can comp maybe one, that can confidently say, I can tell us how to find the return on investment. If we can't find a return on our investment, how are we going to invest together? Who won't trust who to invest if we can't find a return on our investment? So as we close, I'm going to teach you today. Very simple. Ten seconds. When you want to find the return on your investment, remember I showed you all those bank numbers and you can look at your money, you can look at all your money, the opportunity cost, and you can see what that money makes you in any financial instrument. 1%, 2%, 0.001%. So that's how you compare apples to apples to say, you know what, is that opportunity you brought me better than this opportunity over here? Well, you're say 7% ROI, that's a 12% ROI. Now I gotta say, well, are you more reliable than them? And who's more, who's more credible? Who's more risky? Or if the risks are the same and the credibility is the same, I'm going with the higher ROI, return on investment. So here's how we find the ROI. I'm going to teach you in 10 seconds, then we're going to learn together. Simple as this. Whenever you want to find an ROI, you take your net profit divided by your initial investment, your total investment, multiply that times 100, and that's your return on investment. Simple as that. I need everybody together. Net profit divided by investment times 100 equals ROI. And I'm going to show us real quick how we find a return on investment on any, any asset. I don't care if you're selling waters, selling t-shirts, you're doing hair, okay, what it is. You knowing how to find that return on investment allows you to have a sophisticated conversation with anyone and say, bro, I got a solid business. I invested this much into it. I made back this much net profit. And here's my return on my investment. I want you to get down with me. Now you can have a more sophisticated conversation. God bless you, Queen. One more time, net profit. Net profit. One more time, net profit. Net profit. Divided by investment. Divided by investment. Times, 100 Times 100 equals ROI. Equals ROI. Let me show you some game real quick as we, as we close. You, we can take houses. We can take bottles of water. It don't matter. If we were to buy a 24-pack of water for $4, and we wanted to sell, teach our kids to sell water on the street to make some extra money for their whatever, whatever. But we know to sell the water, it got to be cold, so we need a bucket of some ice. So if we spent $6 on a bucket of some ice. If we have a 24 pack of water, how much we sell each water for? How much? A dollar. So how much can we sell the whole pack for? All right. So we know our sales is $24. But we have to buy the waters, we have to buy the bucket and buy the ice. So our investment is how much? $10. Simple. So to find our profit, we take our sales minus our investment. We know we got how much profit? $14. So now if we want to find the ROI on this investment, we simply take our profit of $14 divided by how much? $10 was our investment. Times 100, that's going to equal our return on investment. So somebody who has a, a phone handy, let's do the math. You ain't even gotta think, stop thinking. You ain't gotta think. All you gotta do is what I said, take our net profit, $14, divided by $10, multiply times 100, excuse me, and that number is your ROI. What's that number, somebody? What's that? 
140, 140% return on investment. Wow. That's the better use of your $10 than sitting in your checking account. So let's step it up one, one notch. This game for St. Louis right here. You find a property in the community, you go through the dollar program. You get a property for $1. But now you learn how to do what's called your due diligence and you find out that the property got a $17,000 lien on it, got to get paid. You find out the property needs $24,000 worth of work. It don't matter, it's all just numbers. So we know we in for $41,000 will be our all in to acquire this property. And we know we'll hold it for a few years or whatever the case is, and in a few years, we'll be able to sell. We find out the market value for this property is $69,000. So if we can sell it for $69,000, we were all in it for $41,000 in our dollar, That means we can make $28,000 profit on this property at some given time, right? All I did was took how much we could sell it for minus how much we spent on it. Matter of fact, 21, 28,000, what'd you call it? Yeah, we leave it alone. So boom, 28,000 profit. So our initial investment was how much? 41. So now we got a profit of 28,000 divided by a $41,000 investment times our 100. Somebody tell me what's our ROI. You ain't got to think. $28,000 divided by $41,000 times 100. 68%. It's a freaking great return on me. Pretty good. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> That's, the, that's how the numbers are. <laughs> but now you see how you're able, now you can entice somebody or a lender or private financer or a credit partner to come rock with you on an opportunity because, yo, bro, we can make 68%. You know what? If I'm half wrong, we still can make 34%. If I'm half wrong at that half, we can still make 17%. Still good. Still beats where your money's currently at. If I'm half wrong and half wrong of that half. <laughs> but that's really how I do business. It's how you build wealth out of thin air. It's understanding what opportunities look like and now being able to present those opportunities as somebody that's credible to other money sources or to your credit partners who are in a rebuild, restore, recycle period. Oh, got the capital. It's how you win and win big and win forever. So this is how, again, leveraging the RBCs, we are able to build and begin to build generational wealth. So before we get to our final lesson and close, King, I heard you got some words, right? What's your name again? Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to shout you out then. Uh, you, you came looking good. What's your name? John Muhammad. King John Muhammad. That's what I mean. He's uh, in the building. He, he said he's good, but my team said, hey, the honor is here. Make sure I want to make sure we honor you and appreciate you for coming out. Thank you. Yeah, give a round of applause. <laughs> King out here doing what he got to do and helping us contribute towards our advancement. So, again, tomorrow, 10 a.m., we have our Million Heirs class. I want to teach you all how to acquire your first apartment building for your heirs. 10 a.m. You register at jandwilllive.com. You guys got the flyers. You can also watch the live stream or the replay. Thank you. That's jandwilllive.com. I'll just do it over. Hold on. Is that it? That might help me. Thank you, Queen. You hold that.
Again, that's for live stream. Oh, it's page two. You already got it. So proficient. All right, day, day two, we're at Fallon Park uh, Rec Complex. You guys know the address. Again, you can register for this um, in ahead of time for live stream or in-person tickets. Just $47 registration for you to get a millionaire's class on how to buy your first apartment building. If you thought that we could teach on a corner in the game, why, wait to get me inside. Wait to get me inside. We're really going to give you the game, put it on a platter tomorrow, again, uh, for that event. Uh, did we do our test earlier? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, before I give you our closeout, I do want everybody to go back to your phones after that stop sign, and I want everybody to take your post-test. Y'all took a test in the beginning. You if you didn't, you text this number. You text, you text STL to 69696, right? So, the number you're texting is 69696. The message you're leaving is STL. And we're going to text you back. If you already did that, you're going to see your post-test past the stop sign. And we want to see how much you've learned from when you started this class to now when you finished. So it's a simple, quick little 10 question test we want you guys to take for us, please, because we want to make sure what we're teaching is effective for everyone. So you can do that again. The number you're going to text, the person is 69696. The message you send them is STL. If you already did that, you just go back to your internet browser and scroll down and continue to take the rest of the test you took earlier. We're going to give you just a couple minutes to do that, and I want to give you this last piece of game. All right. I want you guys to get through that test. And if you don't get it complete right now, please do it at home. Again, this gives us some assessment of what you've learned and our effectiveness out here in these street corners. I love this. This is my ministry right here. This ain't going to stop. I enjoy it. And I'm just, I believe in our potential. Like, Y'all see me today, but came through insurmountable odds off the corner just like this. Light poles just like this, curbs just like this in North New Jersey, Somerville, New Jersey, Baltimore, Maryland, and many hoods I touched. And um, I believe in the potential of the ones that people count out. I'll be one of the ones in the crowd, y'all be counting out like he ain't doing nothing. So I know with the right information and the right focus and direction, that many of us can make moves that we didn't even believe we could make. You wouldn't even imagine the moves you could make. And I'm watching myself week by week invest in multi-million dollar deals, 98 units, underwrite $130 million mixed unit projects, all type of crazy things that you never would have thought that young Jay, who they call Maine on the block, would have been able to do. And I believe in our potential wholeheartedly. So outside of tomorrow's class, the last thing I want to give you all is we never, and I've always been intentional as I started, I've been educating now for the last several years. I never wanted to come across just to motivate and inspire. We want to give you all action steps. We want to give you all practical tools to be able to go ahead and build your wealth and to make your plays. So outside of coming to tomorrow's class, where I'd love to see all your faces, you're going to love this apartment, this apartment game, how to build and uh, acquire anchor properties for your heirs. But on top of that, we built our RBC program and RBC curriculum this year, our brand new RBC curriculum in the Jay Morrison Academy. This is an online program we offer guys. You get 24 seven access to the program. In this you get over 85 lessons of this program. Is right now not 
launch yet. We'll be launching in a few weeks, but you'll get 85 lessons, quizzes, tests, and a final exam for certification in the RBC. You'll be certified in real estate, certified in business, certified in credit mastery. Through your certification, we'll be offering joint venture opportunities with us, capital partnership opportunities, and we'll be offering career opportunities for those who want to teach and instruct in your local community as a certified JMA instructor or teacher. With this, since our program is not live yet, it'll be live in a couple weeks, we're offering an additional bonus 65 lessons on real estate and credit mastery for everyone that signs up. The cool part about um, these bonuses in this curriculum, you'll be a part of our JMA student community, and we offer weekly mentorship calls to all of our students. So every week, you'll get access every Wednesday to weekly group mentorship calls to talk to one of us, to continue carrying you through your journey as you're learning through our online curriculum. This curriculum breaks down all the components of real estate, landlording, renting, wholesaling, syndicating, business operations, understanding the difference between an LLC and an S-Corp and C-Corp and sole proprietorship, understanding all the functions of credit, wholesaling real estate. We break down all the functions of evaluating deals, understanding ROIs, understanding cap rates, all the ish they never told us. We call this curriculum what the wealthy know about real estate, business, and credit our schools refuse to teach us. And we're giving you guys access to this online in our course. You all can sign up today at our school website. We want to encourage you, jmorrisonacademy.com. And because we believe in bringing wealth education to our community more affordably, more relatably, and more accessibly, this entire curriculum, the whole thing, you can get an annual membership to the student community, the deal room, the joint venture opportunities, all lessons, lectures, quizzes, etc. You get this entire curriculum for a $497 annual tuition. That's it. Not monthly, not quarterly. $497 for the entire year for access and membership to our student community and the certification program. This is unheard of in the wealth education industry. And for those who may be on budget or want to break it down, we will offer you also 199 times three months. If you want to get started today, and 497 is not in your budget, we offer a 199 mentorship for three months, for your first three months to get access immediately to your bonus lessons and in position for your online curriculum. On our website, jmorrisonacademy.com, which is kind of scribbled in between all this crap. We also have a one-on-one -on -one mentorship tab. You can apply, it's retainer-based for those who are more advanced or want more personal hand-holding and mentorship. We do offer one-on-one -on -one mentorship. You can retain myself, Will, or Isaac for mentorship. In addition to that, you'll also see our credit services for credit repair, inquiry removal, trade lines, and our business funding, all at jmorrisonacademy.com. These are your resources to get in the game. If you know you got a credit thing, go handle it. If you know that you are in positioning credit and want to get positioned for business funding, we offer a business funding coaching program called Easy Funding. We'll train you on how to get business funding. If you know that you are you do not know and are not a master in real estate, business, and credit, you just don't know enough. Nobody put you on a real game. You have to, I implore you, to allow us to mentor you through our RBC curriculum at jmorrisacademy.com. You will be so impressed and your heirs will thank you and be impressed for the information that you have you put to work to start to build your legacy. So before we head out, um, some of our local family here have an announcement they want to make, but I want to make sure that we got some core definitions understood. So we're going to put our St. Lou together, and I need, we're going to define wealth real quick together. So I need everybody to say, an abundance of assets, that supersede liabilities. And debt. And debt. As well. Let's try one more time. An abundance of assets. That supersede liabilities. And debt. And debt. What does CEO mean? She's the and what do they do for the family? Say it again. 
Say it again. They're the leader and visionary of the family, the CEO of the family. And then we talked about legacy. Legacy is, say, the amount of assets and money one leaves behind for their heirs. Say, for my heirs. For my heirs. That's right. And then we talked about our return on investment, which is a very important lesson for us to use to be able to pull money out of thin air, which I'm going to teach tomorrow at 10 a.m. So ROI, return on investment, how we find that is, say net profit. Net profit. Say net profit. Net profit. Divided by investment. Divided by investment. Times 100. Times 100. Equals ROI. Equals ROI. All right, St. Louis, I thank you all for showing me and our team so much love. Appreciate y'all. Big shout out to King Jean, King Josh, Queen Morgan, King Noel, the whole team, our staff, our volunteers. Peace family, hope you enjoyed that game from our infamous Corner Class series. Now I want to give you more game, a certification program, mentorship calls, one-on-one -on -one game plan, all that support you need to help you beat your corner trap, your college trap, or your corporate trap. Let me give you the game through the Jay Morrison Academy of how I got off the corner of South Tiffin Springfield in Newark, New Jersey and made it to the corner office of the Black House that we own free and clear. Guys, tap in to our online mentorship program with the weekly calls and your student support calls. All you got to do is click the link right now for a super deep discount, actually $27 a month for access to over 80 courses with the mentorship calls, your tests, quizzes, and archives, all that. I'm giving the game away for the low, for the corner. Peace.